So welcome to the Google Suite workshop. I'll just be going through some basics today and happy to answer any questions. So I'll share my screen and go through some bits and pieces. So um, just give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen being shared. Yep, hopefully that's working for you too, Marsha. Um, so we've got a few different um, types of documents here. I'm in my Google Drive. so way to access that is to set up a Gmail account, log in and you can go to Drive. So it's that icon. And that's where all your files are stored when you're working with the Google Suite. So it's similar to Dropbox or any sort of online storage um, uh, program that you've used before. You get 15 gigabytes free with Google Drive. So I, I quite like to use it. It's quite convenient. Um, and I've got a few different types of documents here. So um, I think, Belinda, you mentioned you wouldn't mind looking at um, Keep, Docs, Sheets, Forms, Slides, Jamboard and Sites. So I'll just kind of be like quite a brief introduction to each of those today. Um, and obviously just feel free to chime in with questions at any time if there's something specific you want to know how to do. Um, you mentioned earlier that you've used them before, but you know, you know um, they're very similar to Microsoft programs, except they're browser based. Um, you don't have to have them downloaded and they're collaborative. So multiple people can be working on these documents at any one time and they're live. So you don't have to save them. They're always up to date. So if you need multiple versions, you need to save them with um, different names because otherwise it will always be the latest version will be what's there. Um, I guess uh, notes is the most basic, oh, sorry, keep, keep notes is the most basic Google Suite function. So when you're in your drive, you have this little, up in the right hand corner, you have a, a little light bulb icon, which is your yeah. keep icon. And you can click on that and it's just the most basic, it's basically uh, post-it notes. I just use it for shopping lists and things like that. If I just have a thought, something I need to quickly remember, but I don't want to create a whole new document. That's yeah. where it is. Keep's a great app to have on your phone. <laughs> I use it for my, for my notes all the time. And the great thing is that it's always backed up to the to Google Drive. So you have it backed up in a cloud somewhere yeah. just on your phone. So that's the advantage of that one. Yeah. Um, the step up from that is Docs. So um, just like Microsoft Word, it's pretty much has most of the same functions as Microsoft Word. It's probably a little, it's a bit more basic. It doesn't have all the um, formatting options um, of Microsoft Word, but you can do a lot of add-ons. So um, if you're ever looking to do more um, with your docs, if you say it doesn't have that same function as Microsoft Word, you yep. could probably get an add-on to make that happen. So you can just click on that and you'll literally be able to search for whatever um, feature you're looking for and probably someone's created it. You just yep. add that. So that's a great um, Yeah, that's jobs. a great example of a useful tip that you've just given me because I didn't know that and that's really helpful. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Yeah. I, when I didn't know for a while and then someone told me about it and I was like, oh, great. So I can pretty much add anything on or yeah. you can put in requests as well. Okay. Um, yep. Which is great there as well. Yep. So again, you don't need to ever be saving. Um, a good thing about docs. So I, I've just put an example here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll put the link in. So once you've created a doc, you just type just like a normal Microsoft Word document. Yep. And then when you want to collaborate, um, you may already know this, but you go to share. Mm -hmm. Oh. and get link so um, and you can change the settings so if you just want anyone with the link to be able to just view then they'll yeah. only be able to see it not change make any changes yeah. um, commenter they can add comments so if you just want to get people's feedback on document but not actually make any changes that's a good setting yeah. you can have editor and they have full access rights to change anything they like um, and you can also restrict this as well. I think you can do, you can just have certain people added. So you can just share with specific people and you can give them all different rights. So some people can be viewers, some people can be commenters, some can be editors. So you can yep. make all those decisions. Mm -hmm. So right now I will share this link in the Zoom chat so we can all jump in and just start typing together briefly. So that link's in the Zoom chat. While we're, while we're here, can I ask, um, when you get a chance, would you be able to show me how to remove people from access to files? Because I need to do that for Nat and, and you just reminded me or I'll hear the Okay, go. sure. So let me just add someone. I'll just add, uh, let me add one of my other um, email accounts. So I'm just going to give 
that person edit access. Okay, so now when I go back into my share, um, where is it? So now you can see the list of people here who've got access. I can always change what access they have. I can make them a viewer commentator, make them an owner if I actually want to give them full control of the document or I can remove them. Okay, great. Can I like remove Nat from a folder and then that removes her access to everything in the folder or do I have to go yes. through each individual document? No, you can remove access to a folder as well. So um, this is in my Google Drive. Here's a folder example. I can go into that, um, into share. And it'll be exactly the same here. It'll show everyone you shared that with and you can change their settings here from Great. edit, view, remove, whatever. Okay. Yeah, so um, hopefully you've all managed to click on that link and I can see um, your little anonymous animals have appeared at the top. So that's how I know how many people are in the document. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is that it is anonymous. So if you're trying to get people to comment on something without feeling like people know who's writing what, that's really great. Um, so I just want everyone to quickly practice just clicking somewhere in the document and typing just like whatever you like, hello, or <laughs> you don't have to give an actual answer to the questions there, but I'll type at the same time. I can't type. I can't, I can't type anything in it. No, no I cannot type either. Let's see why I've done that because I've only made you viewers. That's why. So right. that, now your editors try now. <laughs> Okay. No. Nope. Try click refresh. Oh, okay. This is good because it's good tech testing in case you need yeah. to do this with people as well. All right. Yes, looks like people can type now. Yes, I can see that. Fantastic. Okay. Yay. So you can see how easy that is for people to be writing at the exact same time and how quick it is to be refreshing and making it live. How do you make people anonymous? It's automatically anonymous. Um, oh. if you just provide someone with a link. If you want oh. to, to know who's who, they would actually log in with their Gmail account. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So when I just started typing, it said that I was logged in with my Gmail account. So then does that mean you can see who I am? Um, anonymous, anonymous. Oh, yeah. It's saying that I'm signed in as um, one of my little dummy accounts. Fruitle juice. Yeah, I'm signed in too, but I think because it's maybe I just, you came in via the shared link, it's come up as anonymous. Okay. Um, so only I can see that I'm signed in as Fruitle juice. That's right. Okay. Yep. So everyone else should see anonymous. Right. Yeah. yeah. When you were typing that, it came up with a little anonymous C that kind of thing. Um, okay. so yeah. I can't see that you're signed in. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I can't see you. So yeah. Okay, great right for a pressure-free collaborative environment, I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I really enjoy that feature. Um, so that's Google Docs. Um, is there anything specific that you'd like to know how to do in this? Um, so can I just clarify? Um, so if you, instead of sharing by inviting people via email, if you just share a link, that's how they can get in and be anonymous. That's right. So okay. if yep. you send it to a specific email address and they entered from that email, I believe yep. that it then tracks them as them. Yep. Yep. So if they make comments, it'll say, uh, Belinda's commented, blah, yep. blah, blah, you know. Yep. Yep. Uh, but if it's just by that anonymous link, then... Yep. Yep. Okay. Excuse me, I'm just going to go shut the door. I just want to say, Marcia, feel free to join in and, you know, talk, ask questions, participate as much as you, you're comfortable with. Oh, good. I had to, uh, couldn't find the refresh button, but I got to. Ah, back okay. to the document. So, feeling happy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it's pretty simple if you just want to be writing and creating things, um, you know, you can insert images. Um, the great thing is you can search the web for images as well, um, similar to sort of clip art or something. So if I just want a picture of a dog, there we go, I can pop that in. There you go, and now I've got a giant picture of a dog, so it's very easy to find images and quite easy to resize and things like that. Um, Does it hold its format better than Word? Word is really, I find it incredibly annoying to do formatting with Word because things keep jumping every time you make changes. Does, does Google Docs work better than that? I think so. Um, only, and it, because it's simpler, 
There's mm. less to go wrong. So I guess it's the, the frustration is that it's so simple sometimes. It doesn't have that complex formatting, but it also means there's less to go wrong and things just seem to work better, I find, um, in general. Yeah, um, inserting links is there. That's pretty easy. So you can insert links to other documents in there. So um, if I wanted to link to my spreadsheet here, I could just right click on that get link and then I'm gonna okay I've got that and I'll make it so anyone with the link can view and even edit this one so I'm gonna copy it and then I can go uh, here is a spreadsheet and then I can select that text click the link button and paste that link in and now if you click on that it's now a live link that will take you to the spreadsheet. So you can reference different documents within your document, which is quite useful. Yep. Great. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is handy. I mean, uh, table, if you don't want to use um, sheets, which is the Excel equivalent, you can also use docs and insert um, tables here. It's a, it's a lot more basic functionality. You can't do um, like functions and um, sums and things like that. It's just a basic like word table essentially. Yeah. That's, the, that's the basics of it. Um, a handy thing as well is if you, similar to Word, um, if you want to copy the formatting of text to somewhere else, you just select the text that you like, hit paint format, and then everything else you want to make the same. So now I've just changed all the font to that same font. Exactly. So that could be useful. Yeah. Um, any any questions about anything? Yeah, I've, I've got a question. This might be one of those things that is in an add-on. There was one time when I wanted to um, convert a um, doc file, as in a Microsoft doc file, um, to Google Docs, and it was a fairly complicated document, and it had um, checkboxes in it, and I couldn't work out how to convert the checkboxes over. And I'm just wondering if that's one of those things where that's considered a fairly um, specialized, um, you know, feature. And so it's probably the kind of thing I'd need to get from an add on, or is that in Google docs somewhere? I haven't seen it. Um, it's probably an add on. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's special characters where you could insert it as a symbol. Probably you could find tick spot, tick spot yeah. from there, but not an um, interactive one. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what I was hoping for. Yeah. No, I, I did find a workaround, but I was hoping that there was something that was, um, a little more actually properly functional because I found one where I could um, insert a, you know, a tick into the box, but I couldn't delete it if I wanted to change which box I had ticked. Um, mm. So <laughs> I was like, well, you just got to be very sure when you, <laughs> when you, um, you know, ticking your box that you've got the right one. So yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have a look around in add-ons and see if I can find it. I would say you'll find something in add-ons because I'm sure yeah. that would be a desired feature. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, have a look there. Yeah. Um, okay. Any other questions about um, Google Docs? No. Um, and you probably already know this, but in File, you know, you've got your version history here, and you've got downloads. So if you do want to download it as a Microsoft Word um, file, you can do that as a PDF and so on. Um, and you can open here. You can actually open a Microsoft Word document as well here, and it will open as a Google Doc. So that can be handy too. All right, so um, next. Um, I have a question, please, yeah. Sarah. Yeah, sure. Um, is everything we do um, on this platform confidential or how confidential is it? Yeah, look, I mean, it is online. I mean, it's, it's, it's private to your Google Drive, so it is password protected. However, you know, there's obviously privacy, con you know, concerns with anything that's online. So Google does have rights to the content that you have there it's tricky you know i guess it's a, it's the same if you're using dropbox or if you're using um, microsoft 365 these companies basically you know because they're storing your data they have access to it so i wouldn't use it for something that was highly confidential information sure. I probably wouldn't but if it's just sort of generic documents it's fine for that yeah all right thanks yeah um, so the next thing is the, um, oh, actually, sorry, can I ask on that? 
So you know how you, you mentioned that you can make a file restricted? What does that actually change? Oh, so that just restricts it so um, only the specific people you shared it with, the email addresses you put in, can see it. So it will just get rid of it being available to people broadly on the internet. So okay. you've previously so made a publicly available link that will disable that. Ah, uh, okay. So what about if someone who has access shares a link? Like, does that mean that, um, you know, whoever they shared the link with can access it? Um, I think if you've made it restricted, only the people who've been added. So even if you've previously made a publicly available link, it won't work anymore. Okay. If you make, if you change it back to restricted. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I've just got this um, this pop up thing. Your access has expired. Reload this document to gain access. Um, yeah, probably because yeah. I changed it to restricted. Okay, right. Okay, so the, right. I see. I That's understand. Cool. So I was just wondering if that was like you had some sort of timing to make us have access to that document for a few minutes, and now it's gone. But or but now I realise you've actually changed it to restricted. Okay. Yeah. Understood. That's what happens there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as I know, you can't put a timing restriction on. You just have yeah. to manually do it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No worries. So the next one is Sheets, um, which, you know, is the same as Microsoft Excel, basically. Again, it's just collaborative. It's browser based. Um, it's Excuse great. Me, so I'm re restricted as well. Yeah. I just sent you a, re a request by email. Right. So that's how you would do it if someone needed to get specific access. Once you made it restricted, they send you a request for access and you can decide whether or not you want to give it to them. You will just get okay. an email in your inbox saying this person's requested access and you can say, okay, yeah, give it to them yeah. or not. Um, so this is Sheets. Again, it's exactly the same. So if you want people to work on it at the same time, um, you can just change your settings here. You can copy the link. And if I put that into our Zoom chat, that link there, you can jump into the spreadsheet if you like, and you can start typing. Um, I believe I've given everyone edit access. Let me check. Yep, looks like you've got edit access. So you can type in there. So this is just a basic table. Um, what I put in here, which you may or may not know, there's the filter option. So you can just select your headings, data, um, create a filter and that means you can sort things by um, different things. You can filter by colour or you can filter by alphabetical order or things like that. Mm -hmm. Sums are exactly the same. Um, so you can um, see the sums in here. Um, if I click up there, it'll sort of show you what it's doing. So it's um, adding all of these numbers together. So it's very easy to make that. It's just like Excel, you know, you've got all your functions in here some average count and you just say what you want it to do then you select the boxes press enter and it'll do the calculations for you if you ever want to see which boxes it is working with you just click in that box and then the color will come up and highlight so it's pretty basic to use um, i find it really useful for um I, I guess when you want to be working on it, like for project management and things like that, like I've used it when we're tracking um, different elements of a project and you might have different things at the top and then dates and then people are initial once things are done and it's easy to track that sort of thing. So it's quite useful for that. Um, there is also the function to make some boxes editable and others not. Um, I can't remember how to do it off the top of my head, unfortunately, but if you do Google it, I think it's in data somewhere. Um, there is, oh, here it is. Sorry, Ugh, protected. Why is it being glitchy? Protected sheets and ranges. So you could add um, a specific sheet down the bottom that people can't, can only view and, and not edit, or specific cells, like a range of cells where they could only put data in there and the rest they can't change. So if there's something like you want to put here, you just want people to add in data but not change headings, for example, that's a way to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you can set your permissions in there. Um, are there any questions about sheets? Yeah, if you're doing formulas, are the symbols, you know, pretty much the same? Like, you know, um, X for, oh, sorry, the star for multiply or the, you know, slash for divide, that kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. So um, if I want to do, you know, some here, I could go equals that box. Um, times, so that's just the asterisk, 
times that box, hit enter, and it'll do the maths for me. So it's doing D2 times D5, three times two equals six. And is there a way to do um, like a drop down menu? So, you know, like you're saying for project management, you know, you can have options of um, in progress or done or waiting for review, something like that. Yeah, so I think um, for memory it's data validation. Yes, so then you select list from a range, um, show drop down list in cells. So you'd want to create the list in another sheet. So we could put options in here, um, started, uh, complete. I don't know what another option is, NA or something. Yeah. And then I think we can go, so on this one for a while, but I think if I go to data, um, data validation and pick a sheet, I can say this is the list to choose from. Now I think it gives a drop down option and you can choose. Hey, you can put in oh, great. That'll be useful. Yeah. So that's quite useful as well. Um, I think you can even set up like, uh, error functions and things so that if someone puts something else in, what does it do? Like you can say, oops, that's, not sure. you know, like you can get it to have certain responses. Um, but yeah, that's nice. That's a good one to show. Is there any other questions about functions in sheets? Mm -hmm. uh, I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's similar to the other ones you can, um, put links in and things like that. So you can make certain cells, you know, link to other things. I think that's probably all the basics of it. Um, but yeah, it's pretty user friendly. Like the sort of things in the menus are pretty um, intuitive. But if you yeah. doubt, Google it. <laughs> Usually that, that answer will come up. You can wrap text. That's probably just one of these buttons at the top. Is it? Yeah, so that's, uh, sorry, that's that one. Uh, yeah the different options. So you can get it to clip if you want to just shorten to within the box or wrap right around. Okay. And you That's can link it. to other cells, uh, sorry, other sheets, like you were doing with the drop down menu. You can just like, you know, in a formula, you could link to another sheet. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Great. No worries. All right. So next one is slides. So this one I find really useful um, as an interactive sort of teaching tool. It's pretty basic, but does a good trick. So I'll share the link again for this one. Um, anyone can get the link and edit, copy. So I'll put the link to that one in the Zoom chat. And this is good because you can get um, different people to jump in and, you know, you can do brainstorms and things like that. So get people to jump in, click on a box and type. So I find that quite useful as just a really simple sort of mind map or brainstorming tool. Um, and the good thing is you can see as people enter. So one person's in so far and I'll show you how many people are in as the icons appear. And even better, you can see which slide they're sitting on by, I can see anonymous walrus is sitting on slide one. I'm a walrus. <laughs> yeah, a walrus. So you can get people, you can almost, you can even use it for voting because you can sort of say, okay, can everyone click on this box at the top right if you think blah, 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 and their icon I think should move or at least you can get them to pick the slide. So can you try click on a box? Yeah, so you can see yeah. anonymous walrus is there. And if a few other people clicked on it, you can see, you know, you can use it for sort of, getting people to do it like a spectrum exercise or to vote because you can sort of use it as a physical space, which can be quite useful. Um, you see slide two again, that's just for if you're doing a bit of a, a brainstorm of different ideas, get people to click in and write things on the clouds. Um, That'll be really useful for running workshops with a group of children, you know, and everyone's separately online. I, I like that. Yeah, I've used it quite a lot like that. And it's handy um, again, because you can see where they're at. So if I said, oh, you know, someone's still on slide one. Um, can we all jump onto slide two? You know, I can see where people are at as well. Um, you can split people up into different groups. So you could say, okay, um, A, B, and C, you're all in group one. Can it, you all get onto slide three? And here you're going to be writing down your possible and impossible solutions to this challenge or whatever, you know, and you can see everyone working at the same time. Um, 
and you know that's that's the sort of thing you can do um, you can also have graphs um, and the data for this is connected to a Google sheet so all the Google um, programs interact with each other which is great so if um, if you want to try going to slide six and then you'll find the graph there's a little link option and you can go to open source and then you'll see it takes you to a um, to a Google Sheet and that's where it's getting its data from for that graph. So you could get people to rate different ideas with different numbers out of 10 or whatever and you can see um, things automatically update and then I'll update the graph here back in the slideshow as well. So if you wanted people to vote on something or say what flavor ice cream is their favorite, whatever it is, you can do that and have like a live graph updating. Um, do you need to create the graph in sheets and then link to the graph or can you just link to the, like the data range and then create the graph in slides? How does that work? Um, I'm trying to remember how I did it. I think I just did it in slides first. So I just created a new slide there. Insert chart. Oh, oh yeah. I'm thinking chart. Inserting chart here. Just resize it. And then to actually add the data, I just click the link and then open source and then started putting it in there. Great. Yeah. Um, you could use it for conversation, like, you know, have some prompts there and say, okay, everyone write your answers in this doc, click on that link. And it'll take you to a Google Doc. It's the same one we we're working on at the start. And people can start putting that. You know, if you have breakout groups, okay, write your, your, all your notes down in this document, um, so we can all see what other people are doing. That's one way you can use it. You can insert um, videos, YouTube clips, which is really great. Um, so yes, I've I've noticed um, that YouTube, uh, the um, embedding YouTube into Google Docs is. Funnily enough, a lot easier, sorry, not Google Docs, Google Slides, it's a lot easier than trying to do it on PowerPoint, funnily enough. <laughs> it's way easier because YouTube's yeah. owned by Google. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's all super integrated. So yeah, put in yeah it's amazing. And yeah. Inserts. And um, um, let's see if it's going to do it for me. I should be able to go in. Oh, yeah, and it should just play within the actual. Yeah, so I'll play within it there. And. Is it gonna let me? Usually it pops up with um, format options. Here we go. Video playback. So you can even choose where it starts and ends. So if you just want oh, to cool. 30 seconds from a video, that's brilliant. It's so useful rather than so, trying, oh, okay, I'll move my cursor along. Where was the yeah, exact Yeah, thing? oh, that's brilliant. Um, so slides, uh, format option, um, yeah, embedding video, yeah. Yeah, so if the format options doesn't come up automatically, just go to format and then format options and this um, sidebar will appear. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Video playback. You can get it to mute audio, autoplay when presenting Jeez. someone. Yeah. That's probably one of the most useful functions I've used. Yeah, before. yeah that's great. Um, similarly, you can, you know, there's all sorts of um, charts and diagrams in here, which are just, you know, the basic stuff, flow charts and timelines, which are just nice and easy. And then you just fill in the information. Um, but yeah, I find it quite useful as an interactive teaching tool, Google Slides. Is it like PowerPoint in that you can, you know, you can just paste a background and then stick something over the front of it and, you know, totally. shift it around and... It's exactly like PowerPoint, um, but it's collaborative and it's browser based. So it's just really nice and easy if you want people to actually jump in and, and add things. Okay. Or interact with it in some way. So I create um, educational resources that I share with other homeschoolers. So I'm thinking, um, you know, if we, if I made like an interactive um, presentation, um, you don't want, you know, different people accessing the one presentation at the same time because, you know, everyone will be changing everyone else's. So that in that case, like would one family download it into their Google Drive and then, you know, interact with it from there? How does that work? Yeah, so um, a good way to do that is to create a template that people then can make a copy of. So you'd send them, it'd be called like something, something template in, in the, you know, in the name and then you just give them the instructions to go to file, make a copy, entire presentation. And that'll create their all their own unique copy that they can do whatever they like with. Okay. It'll save and, it, 
are there things that you can lock so that they can't be edited when someone downloads? Like if I put a logo on there, you know, to say that or copyright on there to say mm -hmm. that I created it, like, and then someone downloads it and then, you know, takes my copyright off so they can put their own on. And they're like, are there things like that that we can? Um, I think you can do that in your master view. Okay. Uh, I haven't tried to be honest. Sorry. I don't have an answer to that question, but I'm sure you can. I'm sure there's ways that you can, um, similar to slides, make certain data uneditable. Um, I'll have a bit of, I'll have a bit of a search and maybe I'll shoot you an email if I figure out how to do that. But I think it would probably be in your master view. There'd be things you can choose to, to make editable or not, but I'll have a bit of a play. I'll let you know for that one. Okay. In, in um, PowerPoint, I would um, like save the whole image as a, you know, as one, you know, like as a photo. Um, and then that way you can't take the logo off without taking other things off as well. Like it would remove the whole image. But if I'm just thinking if it's got interactive elements, it might be a bit different. Yeah. I mean, you could have a photo with the logo that's the background and then have interactive stuff on top of it. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, that is an interesting question. I would, wouldn't mind hearing the answer to that question as well, if you figure it out. So if you, okay. you can just forward it to me. Okay. Um, yep. let me write it down. Yeah. Make elements uneditable. Yeah. Okay. I'll work that out and shoot you an email. Are there any other questions about slides? Mm. Oh, is there a way to do audio? Is that just like video? Is there something that you can? Yeah, it's all in there. So insert, insert audio. Um, okay. Yeah. So images, text box, audio, video, shapes, tables. It's all the, all the basics. Does it have its own um, Creative Commons license stuff or do you have to find everything from the web? It does have its own library that's Creative Commons license. No, it doesn't, but you can search the web um, and then uh, I don't know if it gives you the toolbox here. I know when you search um, for Google, when you're searching on Google Images, you can choose. Um, you can choose the in tools usage rights. Yeah, Creative Commons license. So I guess you could do it that way and then just use the images from that. But I don't think you can actually narrow that down in the filter here. It will just give you everything. Okay. Um, my I've got around that is like just using whatever images I like and then at the end having like a reference slide that has the links to all those images. So I'm like accrediting hmm. uh, maybe one way around it. Okay. Work. Is there a way to, um, so it's kind of a side question, but um, I'm just wondering if I ever use an image that I've, you know, used um, the tool to say that it's Creative Commons licensed and then someone comes back to me and says, you know, that was, you know, copyright. Is there some way to, you know, show the source or something like that so that you can go, well, when I downloaded it, you know, I, I checked and did the right thing? I mean, so, I mean, these will all give you the, the direct URLs. So if you go into them, you could reference the link that, and say it says, you know, from Wikimedia Commons, free media repository, you know, I suppose if you provide the original URL that you got it from. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions about slides? All righty. Um, so next one is Jamboard. This one's really quick and easy to show. It's the, very similar to slides, but just basic. It's not for presentations. It's just a whiteboard essentially. Um, so again, I'll share the link so everyone can have a bit of a play. So that link again is in the Zoom chat now. So if you jump in, you can see it's very easy. It's just basically sticky notes. So I will just get everyone to try and make a sticky note by clicking the little square over there and then just dragging it around. So try click on that left sticky note icon, write something in it and then just try and move it around. Sorry, where's the sticky note? Uh, it's in the far left hand menu over to the side. It should be there. Okay. Oh, this, okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So it's really just again for brainstorming. Um, you can use a pen. Just try having a play with those different tools, um, shapes. There's different types of brushes. 
there's a laser pointer. So if you just want to get, draw people's attention to something like, okay, I want everyone to come have a look at this picture right here. Oh, That's not permanent. It's just a laser pointer. Um, text box and you've got your eraser as well. You can get rid of things. And if you want to create um, a new frame, you can add it in there. You can always just add a new frame. That's just like a new fresh whiteboard and you can go back between them and yet it's unlimited. So it's really just if you want a basic whiteboard function for whatever, for a game, for brainstorming, it's nice and simple. So, okay, sorry, I've, I'm actually, um, I'll come back to the Zoom meeting. I was just actually looking at the other document at the time. Um, so I missed the, um, where do you add a second whiteboard? Okay, so it's up the top here. Yeah. Um, and you just uh, hit the side arrow or the drop. Oh, down. okay. Yep. Just hit a plus and yep, you yep. one in. Yep. Cool. Yep. Simple. Yeah, it's really, really simple. It's probably the simplest um, other than keep notes out of all the Google suite. Yeah. So it's nice and basic, which I like. Yep. Um, easy to use. What sort of games would you run on it? Um, like Pictionary, things like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. We can play Pictionary over Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll share this great um, link I have with you. It's this massive um, document full of all online games. And like there's heaps. There's like um, online Uno and online Pictionary and they're all free. It's so cool. My friend just shared it with me the other day. It's awesome. Um, yeah, pretty big. <laughs> yeah. So um, did anyone have any questions about Jamboard? No? All right. Yeah, that one's fairly straightforward. Um, we've got um, Google Forms, so um, similar to SurveyMonkey or any of those other survey um, platforms you may have used before. It's really easy to use. Um, there's all different question types. Um, so you just do the plus to add a new type of question. You've got multiple choice, um, short answer, paragraph or long answer, checkboxes drop down file upload if you want someone to answer, you know, by uploading something, a linear scale, multiple choice grid. If you just want them to enter a date or a time, you've got all those options there. Um, and if you want to copy a question, um, you just click on it and you've got your little duplicate button. So if lots of questions are the same, just duplicate over and over. Easy to delete. You can make it required or not. So um, they won't be able to submit the form until they've filled in the required fields. Um, you can add a description to any question. So that just gives you an extra line of text if you need to give a hint or more information about the answers you're looking for. Um, yeah, and it's really great. Um, um, there's no responses in there yet, but it's it's very easy to, maybe I can show you a, a pre-filled one. Do I have a pre-filled test? Maybe I'll, I'll just, um, I'll send you the survey link and get you to quickly fill it out so that we can look at how you view responses. So again, um, you can just briefly, I'll show you as well. You can customize your themes. You can choose an image. You can change the color and all that to make it pretty if you like. You can preview it as well. But when I want to send it to people, I can go in here. I can send direct emails or I can just get um, a link. And it has a shortened link option, which I always choose because it's much nicer to send people a shorter link, especially if you're, you know, putting it in an online post or something. So I'll just copy that and paste it into our Zoom chat again. And if you all just want to pop into that survey and maybe just fill it in briefly. Um, I'll get rid of that first question because you don't need that. Can you customise the link, you know, like ice cream survey or something like that? Uh, I don't think so. I think you could try to do that through a third party, like a Bitly or one of those. I think you can pay to customise links, but in this one it's just like a, yeah, automatically generated. Um, have I published a survey on Facebook? Um, I've done polls and things like that. I haven't done a survey through Facebook. Or well, Marcia, were you asking if I've like put one of these links on Facebook before or what was the question? Um, yeah, so I've, I've put um, Google form links on Facebook before and used that as a really easy way to get responses to things. I recently cool. did that with a group from, you know, to get council candidates to give us their views on different things. Um, All right. And, yeah. And did you um, get the responses via email? 
Um, so you view the responses actually in here in the Google form. Oh, cool. So That's very good. It's great. And it means that you can add collaborators as well. So um, I can add collaborators. So that means multiple people could work on actually creating this form. And it also means multiple people can view the responses. Um, and it just gives you a nice summary. You can go into individual answers or you can get a summary and then it'll give you percentages of things. So at the moment we only have one response, but you'll say that, you know, everyone said they're from Alkira. Everyone said strawberry is their favorite. Um, no, I didn't, I said chocolate. Have you submitted yours? Uh, maybe I haven't actually submitted it yet. Sorry. Okay, I'll wait for you to submit because then we'll say two responses and then, um, I said strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got so many different tabs open at the moment. That's okay, um, don't stress. Yeah, no, that's all right. Um, so add file, uh, upload a photo of someone eating ice cream. Did you just tell us to skip that one? I skipped it. Yes, yes. that one, that's fine. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was just to share an example of the question. Yeah, yet. no, I just, because I was going to try and do that and then it was saying um, oh, you know, upload it from your device or whatever and I was just thinking, oh, isn't there an option to, you know, search for one on Google Images or whatever? But anyway, so, yeah. All right, I've submitted the survey now. Beautiful. So you can see now we've got three responses and I didn't even hit refresh that time. It just automatically yeah. for me. Yeah. So you can see we've got, um, you know, one out of three from Cambria, two from Alcura. Um, it was split three ways between chocolate, strawberry and vanilla as our favourite flavour. How much do you love ice cream? Sort of, you know, some, you know, one person in between and then a few more people a bit more... Um, bit more keen and then this is where you'd see the photos come up as well if you'd uploaded something so um, that's a nice visual tool but you can also um, generate this into a sheet which is fantastic so if you actually oh, want to good. analyze the data or drill a bit deeper if it's a much longer survey you can create a new spreadsheet or um, put it into one that already exists that's and great. I love it. It's so handy because, as I said, I just did a survey with all our local council candidates and so we had heaps of responses on different questions. But now that I have a spreadsheet with it in numerical form, we're actually able to, you know, it's a lot easier to create filters and compare like who, which candidates were the most passionate about this topic or whatever because I can filter and then sort in, in order and things like that. So. And yeah, you started the share and how you represented it as well, which would be good. Yeah, yeah. So it's a really interesting way to look at the data, and then you can start doing sums and maths with things. So quite useful. Um, I find it really easy to use, and of course, it's all free. So that, that leads me into a question: um, Does the number of people you can send the survey to change according to which edition of G Suite you have? Like, you know, if you're paying for a, a you know enterprise edition, for example. Um, would you be able to survey more people than if you're just running basic? My understanding is that there's no limit um, okay. on the answers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool because that's better than SurveyMonkey then because with SurveyMonkey, you better. <laughs> yeah, you've got to pay to be able to get more than 100 responses or something. So Yeah, I use Google Suite for pretty much everything. Yeah, I yeah. I have to say, <laughs> the more I learn about D Suite, the more I think, why are we still stuck with Microsoft? Like, it's brilliant. It's just so good. It's so good. I mean, Microsoft obviously has these advanced formatting options yeah. and it's, it's slow to update, whereas the Google yeah. Suite is a lot more responsive because the community says, hey, we need an add-on for this function and someone yeah. responds and say, here you go, and it's all yeah. open source. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, that's cool. Thanks for that. No worries. Is there, um, is there a limit to how many questions in the format? You know, so again, with SurveyMonkey, like the free version is really restrictive in terms of how much we can format the survey or how many questions we can include and all that kind of stuff. Um, no, it doesn't restrict the number of questions. I don't, it may be in add-ons, but um, I don't think, um, what's the word? It has like a flow chart of where you can have different questions lead to different, the different next question. You know what I mean? Um, what's that called? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like if you select yes, it will jump to question five sort of thing. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, but the, 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 I'm sure there would be an add-on for okay. it that allows you to do that. But the basic version is just, yeah, um, linear Great. question at a time. Um, so I think, is that everything? Oh, and just sites is the last one. Um, so this is sites. So this is just a really basic website um, making app. Found it, yeah, pretty easy to use. So, um, 
you pretty much can just drag and drop layouts in, text boxes, um, and so on. So I can just add something in here. Um, I can add in an image. Um, let me add in. So I just literally drag and drop some type of layout that I want, and then I can just add upload, or I can just do a straight from YouTube, a video in there. I can add text and so on, and you can duplicate sections. You can change your background. You can delete sections pretty easily. So it's quite good as like a potentially somewhere to show off like a project. Like if you've done research and you, you just want something as an, you know, an interactive version of a poster pretty much, mm -hmm. you know, um, so this is the basic one I've done. And then you've got publish um, and I think I can go to preview. Where is it? New publish site. So that's my URL. So anyone I provide that to can access this site. Um, it's pretty basic, but it's nice and easy as a, you know, a portfolio. I put in a Google Slides in there. I was able to, inter, you know, insert a Google Slideshow. Um, a photo, a YouTube clip embedded. So really easy just to yep. embed um, features. So, so this would be for basic websites. Like you wouldn't, would you say that um, a small business would be able to run their company through Google Sites or is that not really what it's for? Um, I think you could. Um, I don't know about the add-ons for things like when it comes to stores, yeah, like credit card details and things like that. I haven't yeah. tried doing that. I've just done it for basic data display. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm sure you could though. Um, have it, yeah, maybe have a bit of a play with it, but yeah. I don't know around it. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, and then my other question was going to be um, the the final URL that it gives you is that is that hosted by your domain? Like if, you, if you've got a G Suite domain, um, does the URL go to, you know, your domain slash whatever, or is it, G, is it Google? Um, is my question making sense? Like I'm trying to... Can you yeah. Your own domain name? yeah. Can you register your own domain name and then point it so that, you know, you can choose what the domain name is? Yeah. So I think like the default domain is through done through Google. So it's just the site um, right. name that it gave me. But... Right. Um, I haven't tried, but I would assume that you could, um, you know, have your own separate registered domain and then yeah. add that. Yeah. Um, like, so for example, um, the community center, like off my little thing at the moment is saying live Earth community center. We have a Google domain, which we don't actually use it that much, but um, we do have one. And so if I was to create a, um, a site hmm. that would it come up with, you know, www.livebirdcc.com slash whatever, or would it come up with Google and um, yeah, that's all. I guess that's what I'm asking. I'm just having a look um, at what happens. So I'm just looking in the settings and one of the tabs here is custom URLs. And I'm just saying, um, maybe I can use one that I already have. Um, Please verify your ownership. So you might have to go through some steps to verify your ownership of a URL. Okay. Um, but it looks like you can assign a custom URL to your page. Okay. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's good. Um, I don't know about store, but again, I'm yeah. sure it will have that capacity. I just haven't tried it. Yeah, no, that's all right. I'll, I can look that up myself. I just thought, yeah, that's, that's interesting to know. So, okay, cool. Thanks. No worries. Any other questions about site before we wrap up? All right, well, I think that's that's it really, but if you do have any more specific questions, I'm happy to do a bit of research myself and get back to you. Um, but yeah, I've only really played with most of these in their most basic forms, I suppose. Like I've used them to interact with each other, which they do really easily, which is probably my favorite thing. Um, but yeah, if anything more complex, the Google, you know, support forums are really good.